So I want you to picture something for me. I bet you have been in this situation a number of times. You go to a party, a house party, a bar, wherever you get to meet new people in your lives. In my case, that's usually a house party somewhere. And imagine a situation I've actually been in a number of times as well. You go to this party, you meet somebody new, you start chatting. At some point, you reveal who you are, what do you do for a living. And that person is going to stand in front of you, thinking for the next minute, how am I going to somehow tie into that? He's a fire um, man, or he's a journalist. How am I going to say something intelligent about it? And I bet you've been a number of times in a situation like that as well, looking at someone thinking, right, what do I know about firefighting? <laughs> I have, and uh, I'm, I'm an astronomer, as Richard has said, so usually when I'm in situations like that, um, I hear conversations such as, uh, if you're a fire starter, you might hear somebody saying, oh, right, so you've, you fight fires. Um, how, how big are they? <laughs> if you're a journalist, people could say, well, all right, so um, do you write much? <laughs> me, I'm an astronomer. I often get questions, uh, right, you're an astronomer. Um, can you tell me my future? <laughs> That's the typical thing I get. So imagine a couple of months ago, I was standing in this bar in London, um, in quite a trendy area, and there was this Indian businessman standing next to me. And the conversation started, and after a moment, he learned I'm an astronomer, and he asked me a question I will never forget. He asked me, right, you're an astronomer. What's different about the way you think? And I got to say, I was shocked. <laughs> I had no idea what to say. So I looked at him and figured out, that's a, that's a good actually, idea for an experiment. So I told him, look, how about we just talk for 20 minutes or so, and by the end, you're going to tell me what you have found weird or different about the way I think. So we did exactly that, and after 20 minutes of chatting about everything, um, I asked him, look, so what do you think? What, what's different about the way I think? And he looked at me and said, time. You perceive time differently. And he didn't only mean what my friends usually mean by that when they say it, meaning I'm always late by at least three hours. And what, I, what he did mean, I'm going to explain to you in the next 15 minutes, apparently. <laughs> so I'm going to try and tell you, first of all, what is it like to think like an astronomer? Because I gave it some thought over the last couple of months. Secondly, I'm going to try and explain to you how can you try and think a little bit like an astronomer? And then finally, why doing it might just help all of us save the world. Honestly, not a biggie. <laughs> right, so to start with, let me ask you quickly, how was your last year? Was it good, bad? Did you manage to do everything you were planning to? Well, if you ask an astronomer about a year, he might just look at you and ask you, a year? Where? Because a year on our planet obviously lasts a single year, 365 years, that's what we're used to. But that's just our planet. An astronomer might ask you where, because there are so many other planets you could, you could look at. So for example, on Mercury, a single year will last 88 days. And this must, doesn't maybe tell you much, so I also put in there, I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see, there are holidays there as well. So on our Earth, we get about 26 days of holidays. If you were to scale them to a Mercury year, you would get about a week of holidays only. But obviously, you can go further away as well. If you go all, to, all the way to Jupiter, a year on Jupiter lasts 12 Earth years. Again, if you look at holidays there, you're going to get about 300 days of holidays. Amazing, isn't it? And then 11 years of no holidays whatsoever. <laughs> but that's only our solar system. You can go outside of it, and this is the part of work I do. I search for new planets outside of the solar system. And when I find them, I try to figure out how big they are and what they are made of. And we have found this one amazing planet, one of over 2,000 we have found so far. It's called KIC 12557548B. <laughs> so not the most, the best name ever, but it's very fascinating because it's right up to its star, and it means that an entire year on that planet lasts only 16 hours. Now, if we go into holiday time, you're going to get only one hour of holidays there. <laughs> and you will have to file your tax returns every 16 hours. So again, not a perfect place to live on. But it's just to show you that astronomers have this tendency to think of the entire universe whenever they get asked something. And also, they do not take anything for granted. Now, this time I'm going to ask you for a quick show of hands. How was your last night? 
Did you sleep well? I can see a couple of sleepy faces in the audience. So uh, I'm going to ask you for a quick show of, show of hands. How many of you would have preferred if days and nights were longer? Raise your hands. Right, how many of you would have preferred if they were actually shorter? Yeah, not a big surprise, not a single hand. <laughs> how many of you are okay with uh, the, the way they are right now? Oh, this is a couple of you. Most of you, though, prefer if days were longer. And I'm quite happy because it ties very well into what I'm going to say. Days are getting longer. I don't know if you are aware of it, but days actually are getting longer. And I'm telling you that as an astronomer. So right now, a day on our planet lasts about 24 hours. Why? Well, that's the amount of time it takes the Earth to spin around its axis once. But this has not always been the case. If you go back in time by about 350 million years, which to an astronomer is not that much, if you go back in time by 350 million years, a day on our planet lasted 23 hours. You might not be convinced, so I brought the proof. This is a coral, and a coral has something special to it. The same way you have a tree growing layer by layer by layer, if you cut it down, you can measure, you can count the number of layers inside of a tree, and you'll figure out just how old the tree is. You can do the same thing with a coral. If you cut it in half, you can measure the number of layers that build up the coral. And every large layer, every well-visible layer, will be a year in the life of the coral. But corals have something special to them as well. They also grow layers daily. That means that between every two large yearly layers, there should be 365 daily layers. Now, if you have found a coral from 350 million years ago and counted how many layers were inside of every year back then, you'll find there are about 385. So more layers within every year. That means more days within every year. And the length of the year on our planet has not changed that much within the last 350 million years. So what must have changed was the length of a day. To fit in more days in the same year, you need to make them shorter. So that's just one of the proofs that we have for the day, for length of the day growing longer and longer. Now, if you go back to the beginning of our solar system, all four and a half billion years back in time, which is still not the beginning of time, the beginning of time is about 14 billion years ago. Four and a half is, we have lived, our planet has lived only through about one third of the life of the universe. And if you look at that time, you'll see that back then a day was only six hours long. Right, so let's go now into the future. How long do you think your day is going to be like tomorrow? Well, it's going to grow by a, a tiniest amount. So let me actually go a bit further in time. Let's go one billion years ahead of time, all the way outside of the screen, it turns out. <laughs> so over there, in about a billion years' time, you'll get 27 hours in a day. So about one and a half hours more sleep. So I bet you are already looking forward to it. <laughs> so why am I telling you all that? Well, to show you this time that astronomers also, when you ask them about something, they might also ask you, where do you place it in time? Not only where do you place it in space, like in case of planets, where exactly in time would you like me to give you your answer? Because astronomers have to deal with things on amazing scales. And they have to then try, and every time you ask them about something, figure out where exactly and when exactly would you like me to answer your question. So there are, and there is one more thing, sorry, skipped ahead. How do we actually, what, what, why is the day on the planet getting longer and longer? So I already kind of gave it away a little bit. So, you might have heard about something called the law of conservation of momentum. Sounds very physics, physicists-like, but uh, what it is basically about is that if you spin something up, it will never spin down, unless you're transferring the energy from the spin into something else. Now, in case of our planet, what can it be transferred to? There's only one thing, the moon. So our planet is actually spinning down. And the energy of the spin is being transferred into the moon and pushing it further and further away from us. If you walk outside tomorrow, I, I could see the moon from Krakow yesterday. 
If you walk out tonight before going to the after party and look up the moon, it will be actually a little bit further away from us than it is right now. By how much and how fast is it moving away? Well, to tell you that, I'll need, I'll need a volunteer. I'll need somebody from the audience who's between 40 and 50 years old and about my height. Anybody in the audience that height? All right, a gentleman there, if you could stand up. <laughs> Big round of applause. If I could ask you for your name, Leszek. So we have Leszek there. I'm going to use Leszek as my yardstick. Now, when Leszek was born, about 40 to 50 years ago, he was roughly, well, even before he was born, he was roughly, well, that size, right? 40 to 50 years later, Leszek is 170, 175, 180 centimeters, 175, 175, so the same height as me. If you cannot see Leszek, I'm the same height. Over the same time, the moon has moved away from us by about a single Leszek. <laughs> The moon moves away from our planet by about 175 centimeters every year. Thank you, Leszek. You can sit down. Big round of applause. So that is roughly by how much... Uh, this is a, it's a very good depiction of Leszek right over there. If you couldn't see him, this is Leszek. So the moon is moving away from us by about 175 centimeters every um, Leszek's lifetime. So, again, why am I telling you all that? To show you this time that we tend to measure things on human timescales. It's much easier to, for us to comprehend things on human timescales. So astronomers have these two things, the two ways in which they are ask, answered to questions about the way they think differently. One, we, we have this tendency to think that the universe always evolves. Many of us, and I'm, I'm one of these people as well, we have a tendency to look outside, look at our planet, look at the moon, and think, that everything we see around us is stationary, never changes. But that's not true. But if you are one of these people making this mistake, you're not alone, and you're actually in quite a good company. Albert Einstein, famously, when he developed the theory of general relativity, he, his mathematical equations told him that the universe is expanding. So what Einstein did? He couldn't believe in the expansion. He thought the universe is stationary, never changing. So he actually introduced a constant into his equation to stop the universe from expanding. It's called now the cosmological constant. And after many years, many observations, astronomers were able to prove that the universe actually is expanding. And Einstein had to change his mind, take the constant out and call it his biggest blunder. So we all make this mistake. And secondly, we, as human beings, have a tendency to think in human timescales. But astronomers, to do their job, have to transcend that. We have to think outside of human timescales. And it's not very surprising we think in, in human timescales, because we live on this planet, and we need to survive on it. If you cannot find food, shelter, water, within next two weeks or three weeks, what's the point of thinking about next decades? You're going to be dead by a month. So our brains have naturally evolved to think in human time skills. But why am I telling you about all that? Because I think we as human beings are capable of thinking in longer time skills. In here you can see a couple of problems that we are facing in the world right now. That includes uh, species extinction, global water crisis, uh, rapid climate change, and you can add your favorite problem to this list. Now you can see that they happen on much longer, longer time scales, 100 to 1,000 years, 200 years, up to a million years. When I'm, when I'm saying to you a million years, you know what a million years is. You can comprehend it in your brain, and you can think about it, and you can maybe even plan for it. But do you? Not very often. So let me show you why thinking like an astronomer, thinking in larger timescales, can sometimes help you to perceive these problems and maybe find solutions for them just a little bit better. I'm going to pick one of these cases, the rapid climate change, because why not? <laughs> so let's have a look at how the Earth's surface warmed up over the last 50 years. 50 years is, let's, let's call it an average human time scale. It's going to be Leszek's time scale. So on a Leszek's time scale, the Earth has warmed a little bit, like from 0 to 0 0.6. But the question is, is it a part of a trend? Would you be making a decision basing on just this graph. If somebody came to you and said, look, I have this graph, I think the Earth is warming, 
Should we do something about it? I've got to say, me as a scientist, I would say, well, I don't know if it's a, is it, is it just a variation? Is it going to go down later on? Is it something out of ordinary or is it something ordinary? Now, if I extended this graph to, let's say, five Leszek's lifetimes so far, then all of a sudden, 250 years, and all of a sudden we can see, oh, actually, it has been pretty low for a while. There was some variation, and then it went up. But the question would be, well, this low here, well, maybe it was high before. Now, what if we extend it to 20 human timescales? Well, all of a sudden you can see, or maybe not very clearly, that the temperature has been, have been down pretty low for quite a long time, and you can see just how much they varied within that time frame. And then all of a sudden they shot up, roughly around the time of Industrial Revolution. Is it a coincidence? I'm not qualified to answer. But at least looking at this longer graph, you can try and start answering questions like that yourself. So what I'd like to, to convince you to do is try thinking about some of these problems, and again, your favorite problems, or the problems you can tackle in your lives, thinking in these longer timescales. And I'll leave you two guidelines on how to do it, the way astronomers think. One, don't take the world for granted. We astronomers don't. We know the world is changing every day. Do not think of the, our planet as something that is going to be here forever, that is going to survive in an unchanged state. We have impact on it, and we can have a positive impact on it. Secondly, plan for all possible timescales. Not only your lifetime. Think of generations to come. And think about generations that went. Because only basing on that wealth of knowledge, it's this very long timeline, you'll be able to make informed decisions. And finally, let me just tie in to the topic of our meeting today here. The age is no limit. And I do wholeheartedly agree that the age should be no limit to any of us. If you want to impact the world, whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. But there is one more thing that the age is no limit for, the problems we face. The universe operates on every single time scale there is. We happen to operate on only one, our life expectancy. Please do try and go beyond it. The age is no limit to us. It's no limit to the problems we face. Try and solve them. Thank you.